hello, my, hello, 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 my friends. Um, let's see if this works. Um, you guys are going to have to let me know. And if it doesn't work, if it's not working, then I'm just going to cancel today and I'm going to figure out, uh, other options for next week. Um, so hopefully one of you will, uh, chime in and let me know if things are working. Um, I know I said I'd come back at 1230, but I, I just, I rebooted everything and, uh, I thought I would just chime in right now. So if any of you are out there, let me know. Does it work? Is it working? Is it working? I'm hoping that it's working. Does yay mean that it is Genevieve? I can hear you. Yay. Okay. And is it choppy and weird? Um, or is it, is it fairly smooth? I will wait to hear from you. Okay. All right. Good. Wow. That was really a pain in the ass. Sorry about that. You guys. Um, I hope other others of you are able to come back. Um, and, uh, and I thank you for your patience. Sorry about that. Um, so, let me start over. I guess you guys haven't heard anything I've said, so I can I can speak as if as if it's the first time. Um, welcome uh, to this episode of Ask Me Anything, uh, Tuesday, April twenty fifth. Um, I hope that you're all doing well. It's kind of an overcast day here in Middle Tennessee, um, but it's lovely nonetheless. And I just want to say I had my beautiful crepe myrtle tree uh, pruned a few weeks ago and I thought, oh my God, it's dead, like I've killed it. Um, but there is a beautiful new life uh, coming to the tree just this week, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, crepe myrtles are such beautiful trees, so um, so that is, uh, that's a really good thing. Oh, good. Hi, Cindy. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. I'm really sorry about all of that. Um, <coughs> excuse me again. Um, so uh, today's topic is a good one. It's one that I've uh, touched on before, but it bears repeating, I think, because new people are coming to this group um, every week. And, um, and so it, it's one that just bears, uh, it bears repeating. Um, because, well, we're going to talk about the benefits of group coaching. Um, and, and you know, coaching is essential to our careers. I don't care if you're beginning or if you're advanced, if you've been around a long time, if you're trying something new, if you're in a rut, um, if you can't figure out where you are in the business, you know, then group coaching is really the thing. So, um, so that's what we're going to talk about today, at, just as the prompt, but you are welcome to ask me any other question that you might have today about voiceover. So um, I'm just going to sort of chime in, even though I just sort of summarized everything there. Um, so coaching is, is a really, um, it's a really big part of our careers, um, particularly when you're getting started. Um, and once you kind of find your groove and you have a sense of who you are and what you do best, and you're getting good response for your auditions, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're booking all the time, right? Because as we've talked about before, it's really hard to book. It just is. It is, you know, the market is saturated um, with a lot of really talented voice actors. And yes, there is also a lot more opportunity across the board because we have so many more mediums um, where voiceover is needed. Uh, it nonetheless, you know, Part of our part of the whole deal is that we're trying to find get access, trying to gain access to those opportunities, right? And there are just a lot of us out there. Um, I, you know, I like to say I'm working probably three or four times harder than I was 20 years ago, and I'm making about half the money I used to. That is, you know, that's a complex scenario, but that's just the truth, and it and it kind of just emphasizes the fact that it's really hard to book. So, um, so when, so when we, when I talk about, you know, getting good feedback, I really mean just that, that, you know, agents or casting people, uh, that you're working with are telling you this is good work, right? Um, 
so when we when we're in that groove right where we kind of know who we are what we're doing all of that you know coaching kind of fades into the background and we're really at the you know we're, we're undertaking the business of auditioning which is the real work um in the career right but there are times and there are, there will be times um where you're not getting such great feedback or things aren't really happening um and you kind of have to go refresh a little bit and um, kind of rejuvenate yourself. I do this um, and it's super beneficial. Um, so the thing that's really great about group coaching is that, um, is that you get a lot packed in to, um, into a shorter amount of time. And even though it may be a four week workshop three hours per week which is a lot of time um you are what you're getting is the benefit of everyone else's experience we learn so much by watching others and seeing the light bulb go on in their minds right and with their performance sometimes the light bulb goes off in us while we're watching someone else and that is you just can't get coaching like that one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Um, so, so you, you get the benefit of seeing other people's aha moments or seeing when people don't get the aha moment where whatever direction they're being given is just going straight over their heads, right? But you may grasp it in that moment. And that then becomes a lesson for you, right? Um, you also really get a sense of where you are. I One of the chief um, concerns that voice actors bring to me in coaching is that they have no idea where they stand, right? Because we do this job in a booth, in a closet, by ourselves, and we don't get feedback 99% um, of the time. And so we just have no sense. We, we send our, we record our auditions and we send them out and it's like they go out into the ether and then we ne never hear anything again. And so we, we don't really have a sense of where we stand. Uh, am I competitive? Uh, do I suck? Like, do I have a, do I have a lot of, um, do I have a lot of work to do? Am I, am I just on the edge of a, a breakthrough, right? To, can I sense my own individuality in my read? Am I coming through in the read? Can you sense someone else's individuality in their read? Can I see that with the same piece of copy and the same direction, um, two people are still going to read it differently? That's such a key, key uh, piece of understanding to know that you are an individual, a unique individual, right? And that two people can and are given the same direction and no matter what you do, you're never gonna sound like that other person. And it is very, um, it ought to be very affirming, right? That you don't sound like anybody else, right? And, and, um, and that that's exactly what you want. You want to bring your individual self to the audition, right? And, you know, remove from your mind this idea that you're going to read it like someone else. You can't. It's virtually impossible, right? These are the things that you learn being in a group class, right? So you make, I think you make bigger, longer strides in your coaching or at least you have the opportunity to make bigger and longer strides in your own work by being in group workshops. Um, the other piece of that is it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a paid workshop with one particular instructor. Um, group workouts are great too. Um, so wherever you're able to connect yourself with a group of people who are working out, that's also a less expensive way to get 
group coaching, right? Um, is to be a part of a workout group. And you know, if you don't know of one, you can always start one. And, um, and I think in, in that kind of a setting, it's really okay if you have different levels, um, if you have people at different levels in the group, right? Because there again, you have an opportunity to sort of assess where you are, um, whether you are a beginner, um, if you think of yourself as a beginner, but you get into a group with people who are less experienced than you are, you kind of get a new sense of yourself, right? And that you know more than you think you do, right? Um, and it's, um, it's also less expensive, right? I like, I, there used to be a group in the Pacific Northwest and I think it was headed up initially by Danny States. I could be wrong. I know Danny was in the group, but I'm not sure if she actually started the thing, but, but it was like a collective of voice actors in the Pacific Northwest. And they would on occasion all kind of pool their money and hire somebody like me to come in and do a three hour workshop. Right. And so it's a really economical way to approach, um, to approach coaching as well. And uh, I'm going to see anybody have any questions. I don't see anyone with questions. Um, I'm hoping that we're all still with each other. Um, uh oh, I've got a message, a messenger. Did I stop? No. Okay. Sorry. I'm just checking just in case because it's so hard to know. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, so I would, a lot of people come to me for coaching, one-on-one -on -one individual coaching as beginners. And I steer them clear because the kind of coaching um, that I do is really um, minutia. And when you are just starting to get familiar with a particular genre of voiceover, you don't want the minutia. You want the generalities. You want the things that apply broadly, right? So that you can get to know the business and you can get to know the genre really. And then as you get better um, and you want to hone in on a particular read, um, then, then you can kind of come and do the, the fine detail work of a, of a genre within the genre, right? So, <coughs> sorry, I keep checking my messages just to make sure. Okay, good. Sorry. Um, so, so really group coaching, um, again, just offers all, all of these, uh, various benefits. Um, again, whether you're a beginner and you're looking for, you know, a general commercial read or how to approach video game auditions or how to, you know, what promo is all about the, um, you know, a, an overview of narration, like those are all it, it's group coaching is just the best way to go. And again, it is the most economical. Wow. You know, that sometimes in my coaching, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, I'll only get through one piece of copy with someone, right? Because we're working on such fine detail of the read. Um, so, uh, so to be able again, to, uh, to absorb the experience and the work of other people in the group is of utmost value, right? Uh, Genevieve, I find that self-awareness seems so elusive to me. Do you become more objective when listening to your own voice over time or even through group classes and the like, rather than being critical of yourself? Yeah, I think... I, I think what's great about group classes is that for a really good portion of the time, you're not paying attention to yourself. You're paying attention to others, right? And then when you get on mic, um, it may be difficult to be self-aware in that moment while you are actually doing the audition or, you know, reading the, the piece for evaluation by the coach. But you know, once it's done and you can kind of, you know, shake your, your self back into reality, you know, you're getting, 
you're getting the feedback of the coach. Sometimes, although most group uh, coaches, um, most group coaches sort of frown on this, but every once in a while, you know, you get kind of a spontaneous reaction from the rest of the uh, from the rest of the group if they've you know if they really see a difference. I certainly ask that when I um, when I do group workshops. And, uh, you know, I, I ask the group if they can hear the change from, from the first read to the third read, right? And invariably, they do, right? And they say, yes, it was so, it's like really subtle changes, but really meaningful changes, right? And so, um, so I, think, I think in a group class, you have to sort of take you know, take deep breaths, right? And continue to um, work at being present in the group if if you find it unnerving to read in front of other people. And the more you do that, um, the more comfortable you will get. And, you know, under the care of a good coach, um, a good coach is going to do their very best to make sure that you feel comfortable and that you feel free to create in such an environment. Um, and it's, it's really important to know that you get to make mistakes. Like all learning comes from the falling down. It doesn't come from, you know, it doesn't come from doing everything perfectly. There's no learning in that. I was like, I want to repeat that. There is no learning in perfection. None. The learning comes from the getting it wrong. And that's why I just, I just heard this beautiful uh, quote and I can't remember the guy and I, I, it was actually a video that I saw, but he talked about how artistry today is so difficult because we're really in the public eye. We, we artists are in the public eye and we're being scrutinized all the time. And we don't, we don't get the opportunity to be bad and, um, and being bad at something being less than at something is imperative to growth, right? It, it is, it's, it sounds so strange, but it, it's necessary. Getting it wrong is necessary. And so if we can just be, allow ourselves to, to be free to fail, and that has to happen with a skilled, a skilled um, coach, an instructor. And that's where kind of interviewing your, uh, your coaches, you know, where that comes in handy. And I know it's, it's not always easy to, to interview a coach, but, um, but you can certainly ask people's opinion and word gets around, you know, about what kind of, what kind of coach, you know, you're dealing with, how is so-and-so, you know, uh, are, is that, is that person a taskmaster? Uh, do they make you feel uncomfortable? Are they warm and welcoming? Do they, you know, do, do they understand the real process of, of creation, of creating, you know? So um, does that, does that help Genevieve? Um, you know, learning not to be critical of yourself is a, is a lifelong journey, right? Um, and, that, and that's just something that we have to work on in our personal lives, you know, and to sort of, you know, I, I always feel like I'm drawing from psychology from the 70s and 80s, but it's like, you know, we have this, this person inside of us who feels insecure and like they can't do anything and they need to hide. And we as adults need to kind of talk that person inside of us through it, you know, and say, it's all right if you fail. It's okay if you don't get it right. Like everything's good you're still here. We're still here. We'll survive it. You know, all of that. Um, but, but that piece is a real, that's a real personal, uh, that's a real personal journey. Um, so I, and that I encourage everyone to engage in for the rest of your lives, you know, um, is learning to accept yourself and learning to accept that you are not perfect surrounding yourself with people who, uh, who accept you as you are uh, at every stage of your personal and professional growth, um, that affirm you for the unique individual that you are. All of these things matter, you know, and, 
all our insecurities definitely show up in group coaching. They show up in one-on-one -on -one coaching too, right? I mean, um, that's just the nature of the beast when you go and you find a teacher. The teacher knows more than you do, right? Which is not really true. The teacher knows what they know. And, um, and, and a good teacher is just there to share what they know and to help you incorporate it into all the things that you know. So, um, let's see, John. Um, hey, Dan, I'm so glad it sounds good. That was kind of a wild ride there. Um, group coaching is great, especially when getting started. Yes, I've learned a lot from the performances and feedback from everyone else. It's also a bit less stressful than being the only one on stage. Yeah, I think that that is true. Um, John, you've said that before, and it means it meant a lot to me that when I am learning, I need to give myself permission to be bad. Absolutely. Like, like I, if there's anything that I could convey today that I hope that you will really take with you and let resonate is that creating really is about getting it wrong. You know, I, I have thought about it in the music business too, you know, uh, um, artists create an album. I don't know what they call it. I don't know what the kids are calling them these days. A record, an album, a CD. Uh, I don't know. Um, and they've got, you know, between eight and ten songs. And generally, those are, those are eight to ten songs that are really fantastic, worthy of, you know, being on a record. And then what you don't hear are the hundreds that were written that didn't make the cut, that weren't good enough, that were just okay, you know? And that's the actual work, those other hundred, right? That had to, you have to get through all of that to get to the gem, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's a process, right? And, and it's, there's so much about that, even in our auditioning, you know, you have to go through I don't know, a hundred no's to get to the yes. It's the same concept, right? Um, and we can look at the, those no's as failures, you know, but they're not. They're, they're, it's just, it's the stuff that just didn't work, right? And we move through it till we get to the thing that does work, right? And all, everything that we learned from the hundred songs, you know, uh, that didn't quite work, right, contributes to the 10 that did work right? And that made the cut on the record. So um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to leave that there. Um, uh, I also, well, let me say this one last thing, right? Because, because the, the, the question often comes up, you know, how do you, how do you find a good group workshop? Um, how do you find a good coach? And, you know, that's where your community comes in and you ask people their experiences, what has worked for them. Um, and sometimes we are a little nervous about, you know, hitting the purchase button, right? Or the sign up button and laying down some cold, hard cash um, because we're not sure if it will be beneficial. But I'll tell you, even a bad class can be beneficial. You keep your eyes open and your ears open you can learn a lot even from a crappy class, from a crappy coach. You can learn what you don't want. Um, you can learn what doesn't work. You, you know, it, it's, and that is all about your, um, your mindset and your willingness to learn from every last little experience that you have. And so you get to, you're free to, to fail there too. You're free to pick the wrong class, you know, and have it be the one that you go, yeah, you know, I wouldn't do that again. And you have, and you've helped yourself define what matters to you and what you want. And that is what this is all about. You defining what works for you, um, the type of coach that you want, the kind of work that you want to do, um, the kind of tools that you can implement to 
help yourself be better in the booth. Um, we don't all respond to the same tools in the same way, right? So I could experience a coach and be like, whoa, not interested in that because I don't like that style. And another person may be like, that was just the kick in the ass I needed, you know, and both of those experiences are valid, right? So, um, so, so you're, you're free to get it wrong in every way, you know? Um, so, uh, I think that's the big takeaway for today. Um, that group coaching is really beneficial. It can give you a good overview of where you stand, what you, what skills you already possess, what you need to learn. Um, and, you know, and really go to private coaching when you are really confident, um, with, uh, with what you know and, and what you do and how you do it when you want to dig into some, some finer detail. And I, and I mean that with regard to technique, you know, you can always do one-on-ones for career coaching and guidance. And what do I do next? And, and how do I get out of this rut? Like that, that's, that's a great time, you know, to, uh, engage the services of, of a, of a voiceover career coach. Um, like that kind of one-on-one -on -one stuff is great because that then that's really individualized to you. But, you know, with regard to technique, right, um, just wait until you've got a really solid sense of what you do and then you can dig into minutia with a with one-on-one -on -one coaching. My two cents. Um, Dan, it has to be a fluid process. Nothing stymies creativity like your determination to be perfect. Oh, my God. That is so true it's so true you know uh uh what is it perfect is the enemy of the good you know um and man good is good <laughs> you know um so i think that's i think that's it um yeah okay um again if you're coming to this late and you still want to ask a question after i've signed off um feel free I'll be back uh, and I will take a look and do what I can to answer. And of course, if anybody just has a comment or if you have a group class that you have really enjoyed, um, please post it and, um, and I'll keep you apprised of coaches that I think are really great um, and who are, offering, who are offering group classes. I offer group stuff once or twice a year. Um, and of course, I will always, you will always be the first to know about that. So um, thank you so much for your patience today um, with all the technical stuff. Hopefully, um, hopefully I will be able to iron that out more quickly next time. Live and learn. Um, all right, you guys have a fantastic remainder of your Tuesday and rest of the week. And um, I will see you next week. Who knows what the topic will be? We shall find out together. All right. Take care. Ciao.